Regardless of what Congress agrees on, private insurance companies know change is coming. Kylie Bennett tells us the government's cost-saving plan could mean higher premiums for the privately insured. It's the story of hard-working Americans who are held hostage by health insurance companies that deny them coverage. They play the villains in what is one of the most controversial debates of our time. Everyone likes to demonize the health insurance industry. It's fun. <laughs> No doubt private insurers make for an easy target, with many of them raking in hundreds of millions of dollars in profits each year. But Bruce Bullen, the interim CEO of Harvard Pilgrim, a not-for-profit insurance company out of Massachusetts, says before you take aim, take a close look at the numbers. A penny of every dollar is, is uh, profit and administration, health plan profit and administration, and uh, really that's not what's creating the increase in health care costs. No matter how the numbers add up, most private insurers agree that the cost of health care is out of control and some sort of reform is necessary. It might have an unintended consequence of, un of having an unlevel playing field. For Chris instance, Dugan, the director of corporate communications for Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield in Maine, says he's worried that private insurers will have to pick up part of that cost, meaning higher premiums, in effect forcing insurers to price themselves out of the market and pushing everyone into the public option, killing the so-called villains in this debate. If we're going to really reform health care, we need to take seriously the fact that this is a big industry. It's, it requires uh, the players to do what they do and to do it right, but it doesn't mean uh, eliminating entire portions of that industry in order to reform it. A world without health insurance? Perfect to some, but beware, insurers claim, of putting your health care in the hands of your government. In Portland, Kylie Bennett reporting. So what would government insurance cover? One of the most controversial topics involves abortion. It's not specifically mentioned in the legislation, but 85% of insurance companies cover the procedure, raising concerns about publicly funded abortions. Section 1233 allows Medicare to pay doctors for optional end-of-life counseling sessions. The section specifies how frequently it can be done, the topics that should be covered, and asks doctors to report the results of those conversations to the government. Sections 1181 through 1185 make major changes to the prescription drug benefit in Medicare. It would make more prescription drugs available through Medicare and permit mid-year enrollment changes because of drug changes. It might not be the most well-known piece of the health care puzzle, but some say tort reform, changing the medical malpractice laws in this country, could save millions of dollars. Right now, each state can pass its own medical tort laws. Emily Reamer takes a look at how it's working in Ohio. Dr. Karen King set up her OBGYN practice in 1992 in a suburb of Columbus. Over the years, she expanded, and today there are five doctors on her staff. I think you have to love taking care of the patient. You have to love taking care of the patient long term. Several years ago, she says that patient care was in jeopardy because her medical malpractice premiums skyrocketed 105% in just four years. Absorbing that cost was a challenge. And you can only see so many patients well in a certain amount of time. And if you like to listen to your patients, it makes it difficult if you have to add in 10 more patients to pay the bills. Today, it's a different story. Dr. King says her premiums have dropped. She credits Ohio lawmakers for the change and the medical tort reform they passed in 2004 that includes limits on medical malpractice lawsuits, one reason for high premiums. It's not only saved us money, but I think it's also provided greater access to care. Tim Maglione is with the Ohio State Medical Association. He says since the reforms passed, the number of liability claims dropped 40 percent, a change that stabilized the state's insurance market. If it can help states like Ohio with stability in the marketplace, it can help nationally. But there are questions about whether tort reform really saves health care dollars. Some say the changes made in state law in 2004 are not the reason premiums dropped and the real result, victims denied justice. That the entire cost of medical malpractice litigation is less than 1% of all spending on health care. Jerry Leesburg is a medical malpractice attorney. 
He says it's not lawsuits that raise malpractice premiums, it's the insurance companies and the way they do business. When insurance companies start losing money or not making as much money in the stock market and they're paying out more money and claims than they're taking in, they've got to do something to make up for those loss of profits. Leesburg doesn't think national tort reform will help control health care costs, but Dr. Karen King believes her experience says otherwise. It needs to be a total system, part of the total system change. Otherwise, it's not going to be effective. In Columbus, I'm Emily Reamer. The price tag for the president's health care plan is estimated to be at least a trillion dollars over 10 years. How will it be paid for? Well, no one knows yet. Lawmakers still don't know where they'll get funding for half of the program. Proposals include a new tax on the country's wealthy, up to $1,500 for taxpayers making between $350,000 and $500,000 a year. For people making more than $500,000 a year, they would pay up to $9,000. More than a million would be $9,000 plus 5.4% of any money earned above a million dollars. But it's not just the wealthy that could get hit. The idea of taxing soft drinks has been proposed. And another idea not likely to pass is the idea of taxing health benefits on people who already have insurance.